I'm going to show you how one can go about cal to calculate the radius of the liquid outer, the Earth's liquid outer core. So in uh, geology and astronomy, we learned that our planet has a mantle, and then when you go below the mantle, there is a core. The core has a liquid outer portion and a solid inner portion, according to theoretical models. Okay, So it looks something like this. You have the uh, Earth's crust, you have the mantle, and then by the time you get here, you have the liquid outer core, and then here you have a solid inner core. So we can call that SIC, solid inner core, liquid outer core. So what are the proofs? According to the theoretical models, we have liquid outer core. So what are the proofs that there is liquid outer core, and how large is it? Okay, so here's one of one of the things we can do. If there, when there's an earthquake on one side of the Earth, such as this earthquake that recently happened in, near Japan, the earthquake releases uh, primary and secondary waves. There's P wave, means primary. Primary waves are longitudinal waves. They shake the ground back and forth. Longitudinal. Longitudinal. Secondary wave are transverse. They shake the ground up and down, perpendicular to the direction that the wave is traveling. So that's called a transverse wave. It goes up and down they probably do more of the damage. So this is secondary. Transverse, transverse uh, transverse wave. The other thing that's true about them is that the primary wave travels faster. Something about, I believe about 10, uh, I, I have to check the numbers now but it travels a little bit faster than the S wave, okay? Secondary, well, it means it's the second wave that reaches you, okay? On a later video, I'll talk about their speeds and I'll talk about how we can figure out where the epicenter of an earthquake is by doing calculation between the, the difference of the speeds of the two, okay? The other thing that is true about this uh, secondary wave is that it can only travel in solids only travels in solids. So if you're in the liquid, like let's say the water, secondary wave doesn't hit you, okay? Uh, well, the way you can remember that S and S, secondary, it only travels through solids. So as the earthquake waves travel all around, uh, the secondary wave, since it's transverse, I'm gonna depict it this way. Secondary wave goes this way. If you live over here, your seismograph can detect the earthquake because the mantle is a form of solid. So the, the earthquake can penetrate through the mantle and the, the secondary wave and the primary wave could both reach here. So we can say SMP wave reaches here. Over here, the earthquake goes like this, goes like that. S and P. Over here, it goes like this. S and P. But when the wave travels this way, it dies out, okay? In the liquid. Okay, so let's draw that with a different color here. The wave is coming, it, it dies out. How about the primary wave? The primary wave makes it, we'll draw it this way, longitudinal longitudinal, longitudinal. So all this side gets it, all this side gets it, and this side gets it too. So a longitudinal wave like this, all the way through. So P wave makes it here, okay? P wave makes it here, but no S wave. But no S wave. Here and here, both of them, okay? So, 
how could we determine the size of the, how big the liquid core is? If the liquid core is smaller, these two positions are gonna come closer, right? If the liquid core is farther, these two positions are gonna go farther. So let's just assume we could draw this like this, like uh, draw a triangle here, from here to here, then draw another triangle like that. Actually, it's like an arc like this. Let's assume there's a city here that received the S and P wave. And then uh, across, across the globe over here, there's another city that received the S and P wave. But everywhere in between, only receive the P wave, okay? This guy received SMP, this guy received SMP. All these people received SMP. These people only received the P wave. P, 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 and then all the way to that corner, okay? So uh, let's assume the distance between these two cities, okay? Let's assume the distance between those two cities are roughly 8,500 miles. Okay, now here's what else we can do. We can draw a, from the center of the earth, like this, like this, another ar arch from the center, okay? Go like this, go like this. This is an angle, and this is the radius of the earth. So this angle right here, it, that could tell me the angle subtended by these two cities. The angle subtended by the two cities that the, are at the edge of the, uh, the place where the, P, the S and P waves start, okay? So what is this angle? So I'm gonna put S is equal to R theta. From geometry we know the arc length is equal to the radius of the circle times the angle measured in radians. So we have here 8,500 miles. What's the radius of the Earth? The radius of the Earth is 6,378 kilometers, which is equivalent to 3,986 and a quarter miles. 3,986. 3,986 and a quarter miles. That's gonna give me the angle. So let's divide that. That's gonna give me an angle of 2.1323 radians. Remember, every radian is 57 degrees approximately. So this is 114 degrees, 115 degrees. So it's a little more than 90, okay? So now what do we get from there? Well, my ultimate goal is to do this, is to be able to find the radius of the the liquid core, this radius, okay? The radius of the liquid core, we'll call this RL, RLC, liquid core. So go like this, R, radius of liquid core, from here to here. Now, what's this distance here? Okay? So uh, this makes like, uh, well, actually, this makes a straight line, you know. I should just make this a straight line. This is radius of liquid core. This is radius of Earth. So if this is 2.132 radians, what is this? Okay, now I can change this to degrees. I can change this to degrees. I can say pi radians, okay, is 180 degrees. So divide this answer by uh, pi times 180. It was uh, 122.17 degrees. We could have stayed in radians, but it's just easier to visualize degrees. 